Joining me now to discuss all of this is Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida, a member of the House Oversight Committee, and former Republican Congressman David Jolly, who is no longer affiliated with that party. So, Congressman, I I'm just going to start with this. Um, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she, she leads Kevin McCarthy around by the nose. We get that and understand it. Just from a practical, functional matter, how hard is it to set up an impeachment hearing? Like, this seems like a lot of legislative moving and shaking that would need to be done to even set this up, even though we know it's bogus to begin with. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who came out just the other day and said that uh, she's recommending some states start succeeding from the union. So, you know, when, when she starts her new country, she, she can be in charge of impeachment uh, in, in that new place. But it, it's fascinating, right? We're, right, Jason? We're watching Freedom Caucus members fight amongst themselves over Joe Biden impeachment. I mean, I didn't have that on my bingo card that Joe Biden's impeachment would be dividing the Republican Party, but it's exactly where the status of the House Republicans are right now. They have no direction. They don't know whether they want to fund the government. They don't know whether they want to impeach the president. Uh, and, and to be quite honest, you know, I, I'm starting to feel bad for James Comer. These hearings have had, you know, low T and, you know, are just not connecting with the American people because they're just throwing darts at the board. And again, now you got Freedom Caucus members admitting no evidence on Joe Biden. I mean, that's the bumper sticker right there. Uh, David, this is the, the other part that, that sort of gets me. And I thought uh, Congressman Raskin's point was very clear that, you know, some of this is research. It's mocking impeachment. The impeachment process is supposed to be for obvious high crimes and misdemeanors, things that are so blatant that the entire public knows or understands them, things that are so blatant that they attack the core, the absolute core of our democracy. The idea that Republicans basically want to do this because they just don't like Joe Biden, doesn't that sort of make a mockery of what an impeachment is supposed to be about anyway? Yeah, Jason, I'm glad you framed it that way because we are about to see the fitness of Speaker Kevin McCarthy put to test. We're about to see his personal medal and integrity put to the test. We're about to see his ability to be a prudent custodian of the House put to the test. But this goes all the way back to the corrupt bargain that Kevin McCarthy made with Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of the others to become Speaker after 15 votes. And I believe the deal was struck then in January. I don't think it's a deal in the works now. I think Kevin McCarthy, whether it was explicit or not, he knew they were going to have to have a debt ceiling raise that he was going to lose. Kevin tried to spin it like a win and say there were conservative victories, but the Freedom Caucus called his bluff and said, no, there aren't. So they're already smarting from the early summer debt limit increase. Now you're looking at the annual budget breaking down, funding the government September 30th. And here's why Kevin McCarthy will have to move forward with going after Joe Biden. There is not a budget that could pass right. just with House Republicans and get the support of Senate Republicans. This actually isn't about even compromising with Senate Democrats or Joe Biden. There is not a hard right conservative budget that could get 218 Republicans in the House that would get Mitch McConnell to vote for it, which leaves Kevin with saying, OK, the only way, whether we have a shutdown or not, the only way to keep the government funded is going to be with probably 175 Republicans and 100 plus Democrats and Joe Biden's signature. And then how does Kevin McCarthy remain speaker after that? likely to move forward with an impeachment that he agreed to last January. Congressman Moskowitz, you know, speaking of the Senate, the Senate is obviously the second level, right? If you're going to do an impeachment, you have a vote, then you have to sit it to see if the person can be removed. I want to play you some sound uh, by Senator Fetterman from Pennsylvania about what he thinks of the idea being floated around amongst Republicans in the House as to what impeachment is and get your thoughts on the other side. Go ahead and do it. I dare you, you know? You know, if you can find, if you can find the votes, you know, go ahead and, you know, you're going to lose. Your man has, what, three or four indictments now, and, and you're going to, so, like, like I said, you know, like sometimes you just got to, you know, call their, call their bull****. Congressman, I, I think what, what Fetterman is also pointing out here is not only is it going to fail, but, like, I don't think the country has an appetite for this. I mean, I, I don't, I, look, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think that you can try and impeach the president because of Hunter Biden. I don't think you can try and impeach the president because he pulled the troops out of Afghanistan. Is it some of the failure of this, the idea that the American people heading into the 2024 election, this might be the last thing that they really care to pay attention to? 
Well, unfortunately for the Republicans, the failure is, is that it's, just, it's the truth. The truth is Joe Biden did nothing wrong. I mean, Senator Fetterman is, is, is right there, which is, you know, they've been talking about it, they've been talking about it, they've spent all tens of millions of dollars, I'm sure, of taxpayer money running all these investigations that have, have proven nothing. And by the way, if the polling showed that the American people wanted Joe Biden impeached, okay, you can be sure Republicans would have launched this inquiry already. But as soon as these articles got filed, they buried them in committee. They buried them in Homeland Security. They didn't want to talk about it. You got Republican members, moderate members, Freedom Caucus members coming out, trying to delay impeachment. That tells me they know this is not good for them if they want to hold on to the majority in the House. And so, you know, it's fascinating fascinating to watch from a political science standpoint, but it's horrible if you're trying to keep the, the government open and get us funded so that, you know, we can keep the economy going and, and you know, and make sure that the, the American people have a good place to work and good jobs and all of that jazz. I mean, this is this is what the House Republicans said that they were going to do when they got power. Oh, when you finally give us power, let us look, we're going to show you what we can do with the House. And meanwhile, they haven't passed a single piece of substantive legislation to help the American people, not like the infrastructure bill, not like the Chips and Science Act, not like the infrastructure, I mean, the Inflation Reduction Act, nothing. They don't have a single piece of legislation to stand on. And so now impeachment, which is what they fed their primary voters, they can't even deliver on that. But look, they, they sold themselves to Donald Trump. They 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 want to do this. You know, Donald Trump is demanding this, of course, because he wants right. to run against somebody else he can say is impeached. So it's equal on both sides. So, you know, I look forward to James Comer and all these folks filling out an FEC form for an in-kind contribution to the Trump campaign, because that's all these hearings are. They're an extension of the campaign. You know, as, as a poli sci professor at Morgan State, I, I love numbers. And I think the numbers, you, you make a good point, Congressman, I think the numbers on this also don't really play out in the Republicans' favor. There's a recent poll from the public policy polling that found in 18 Republican-held districts won by Biden in 2020, 56 percent of voters think an impeachment inquiry would be more of a partisan political stunt, including 55 percent of independent voters, while only 41 percent think it would be more of a serious effort to investigate important problems. Look, David, you're not in office anymore. But if you hear those numbers, if you are a member of Congress in one of those districts, do you want leadership forcing you into this impeachment hearing heading into an election year? Absolutely not. And, and here's the affirmation of that. The easier vote in this whole impeachment question is the vote to open an impeachment inquiry. Right? That's just suggesting the House should go look at the facts. They don't even have the votes to open the inquiry. And they're jumping to an actual impeachment vote and doing a whip count there, and they're nowhere close to that. Kevin McCarthy very likely could lose the House if they pursue impeachment, and he knows that, because consider what would be put in front of the American people. Bad decisions in the personal life of Hunter Biden. We all know that. He's owned it. He wrote about it in a book. But they actually haven't even proven that Hunter Biden did anything illegal when it came to his representation or work with foreign clients. The Department of Justice didn't even find anything that Hunter Biden did that was illegal related to representing clients in front of the government, right? They, they brought up charges on a gun charge and on a tax charge, but not about his representation. So they haven't even made the son culpable for an illegal act, much less than tied it to the president. So do Republicans really want to spend the next year talking about the president's son and his personal failings that frankly failings similar to probably those that have touched many American families, or do they want to focus on bread and butter Republican issues, which you can still squabble with from the border, the taxes to the economy? I think Kevin McCarthy would rather focus on the latter. But as I said, this will be a test of his fitness because I think ultimately he will cower to the far right to protect his own speakership. Congressman, I want to make sure that we end on this because I think it's key while look, while the Republicans run the House, I do think it's always important that we focus on what Congress is actually doing. So on the Democratic side right now, even with McCarthy's leadership, even with Marjorie Taylor Greene basically, you know, playing with his puppet strings, what are Democrats hoping to do with this new session that's come back? Obviously the debt ceiling, but there are other critical things on the Democratic agenda that you're trying to push for for the remainder of this year. Well, look, we're, we, I mean, the first right off the bat is we got to keep the government open. Right. right. So Democrats are looking to fully fund the government. We're looking to, to fund, you know, to continue to fund uh, the Ukraine uh, issue out with uh, Russia to make sure that they have uh, the weapons that they need. Uh, we're looking to fund FEMA. Right. The disaster recovery fund has run out of money. We got to make sure cities and counties have the money that they need, that reimbursement money so that they can respond, recover and rebuild after we have these disasters. We're looking at being the adults in the room and being responsible.
Uh, and so, listen, I, I think the next three weeks are going to be fascinating. It's going to be interesting to see, as the Republicans tear each other apart, how the Democrats uh, in the House, uh, you know, handle that. Also, obviously, we, we're, we got the Senate. You got Republicans and Democrats in the Senate unified uh, on a lot of the budget issues. And so you could see a showdown uh, between the House and the Senate. You know, for the last nine months, uh, Leader Jeffries has talked about how model Republicans are leading us down this horrible path and that we're going to be uh, we're going to be the responsible ones in the room. And I think that's what you're going to see from Democrats in September. David Jolly, very quickly, Joe Biden, he's hearing that Republicans are trying to do this in the House. Vice President Harris, does he make a statement about it? Does he say, hey, bring it, come with it, pull up with your impeachment hearing because I know I'll beat it? Or is this something that the president says, hey, I'm above the fray, I'm going to keep moving, heading into 2024, where whoever you guys put up against me, I'm going to beat them? Stay above it. Focus on an economy that lifts all Americans, solving the problems for families at their kitchen table, protecting the constitutional order and constitutional norms that Donald Trump wants to shred. The contrast will be obvious to the American people. Thank you, Congressman Jared Moskowitz. Really appreciate you joining the show this evening. And former Congressman David Jolly, one of my favorite people. Thank you for joining us on The Readout.